Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Mahdi Tijani back with you and I'm joined once again with the game master, our esteemed guest, <laughs> Abu American, aka Abdurrahman. Akhi Abdurrahman, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, bro? Wa alaykum alhamdulillah wa khairan, akhi. How are you, sir? How was the family? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. You know, just life. That's it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Good. Alhamdulillah. You know what, Akhi? Tell me. I have been in two minds as to whether to bring this up. But I okay. want to bring it up for the purpose of um, reminding the people of the importance of being really careful with these types of uh, this type of gossip. Yeah. I don't know if you heard of um, the, the scandal that has come out about the brother uh, Seth. What's his name? That Qari, he's a Qari. I'll get you his Okay. Name. Yeah, I caught wind of it today, but I don't know anything about it other than what I saw on Twitter today. And that right. was really nothing. It just, they were talking about it. That's all. Right, right. So there's some really scandalous accusations coming out about Brother Fatih Safarajik, I think is the, the pronunciation of his name. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read them off, but like, it's really bad stuff. Really, really bad stuff. Okay. Okay. And, um, in fact, before I give my view on it, Ahi, what is your initial reaction whenever you hear of things like this, a scandal, a scandal coming out about someone in the Muslim community who is you're meant to be, you know, a, a, a um, an example to other Muslims, and then something comes out like this? What's mm. your initial reaction, and then what advice would you give the brothers and sisters who you know like to peddle these stories around? Well, my initial reaction is that it's haram. I mean, that's my initial belief and understanding. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but my belief and understanding is haram. I see what I understand from the Sunnah is it's the obligation to cover the sins of the Muslims, not spread them. And only in specific cases where it's where the individual is asked about in his character, maybe about marriage, this, that, the other, you know, is he a wife beater? Is he this? Is he that? Then you can talk about those things amongst those individuals who are involved and have a direct concern for like, you know, those particular issues with that specific individual otherwise spreading people's sins and gossiping I, I do believe it's even there's you know scandal mongering i believe is the term when you translate it into english you know just you know i don't know that it's permissible i don't know it's permissible i know that tail carrying you know and all this type of stuff is is like impermissible you know it would fall into a category of backbiting to a degree it doesn't you know one of the sahaba i can't remember who it was I wish I could remember, but he was talking about, someone was talking about a situation and he had nothing to say. And his statement was, Allah saw fit to take my person or leave my person out of that situation. So I see it also fit for me to leave my tongue out of it. Allah Akbar. Wow. That's heavy. <laughs> That's heavy, Akhi. MashaAllah. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to take sides here because I don't know anything. Right, but yeah. my, my because I have been on the tail end of some of these accusations in the past, completely like pulled out of their backsides. I know exactly what it feels like uh, to have you know rumors peddled around about you that literally have no founding whatsoever. Hashtag so what I will say is this: said it again, Ahi. I said hashtag me too. Right, you know they, they they've done it to me over just they just make stuff up. You know they see some video like my wife tying her shoes, and all of a sudden entire stories come up that mm -hmm. have no foundation in reality. Yeah, absolutely. And um, <clears throat> it reminds me of the ayah in the Quran in Surah An Nur where Allah says, Lawla it's about the Audu Billah in the Shaytan Rajim. Lawla it's Samir Tamuhu, Kultum Maya, Maya Kulu, Maya Kulu Lana, Anna Takala Mabihada, Subahana Kahada, Bohtan on Adim. So when Aisha Radiallahu Anha was accused of the, the ifk, as you know, the accusation of adultery. When, and then Allah finally revealed the verse regarding this. He chastised some of the companions. He reprimanded them, said, When you heard this, Why didn't you say we should not speak of this or we shouldn't speak of this? Subhanaka hada buhtanun azim. So glory be to you. This is a great bohtan. It's like a great lie that has been peddled. So in the least instance, because sometimes the, the old adage is true, that there's no smoke without fire. Sometimes this is true. But and unless you have concrete, like indisputable evidence, then shut your mouth and stop peddling this stuff. Because it reminds me of what you talk about, Abu American, that 
I mean, I know you said that women have the addiction to outrage porn, but I think it's a human thing. I think a lot of human beings have such boring lives that they are literally addicted to outrage porn. They are yep. addicted in any way, shape or form. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. Oh, what's this juicy goss? Oh, my God. Did you hear what happened here? Did you? Oh, my God. I knew there was something fishy about him. And then there's excitement for the day. And yeah. all the while, said person, he or she, could be completely innocent, just as Aisha radiallahu anha was innocent. And that's why I say that adage, there's no smoke without fire, it's not always true. Because the smoke that came out regarding Aisha radiallahu anha was a complete lie, a fabrication. So yep. be super careful, Ikhwan wa Akhawati. I, I just see people like they're jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, I knew he was this, that, and the third. And these accusations that have come out, they're not small accusations, Abu American. I'm not going to repeat them because I don't want to perpetuate this story. But they are big things, man. Like well, big man. things. You know, and on that note, I know that the brother, he's a young brother. And I remember mm -hmm. I was listening to a, uh, a, a neurosurgeon speaking recently and he is he he, ha, he has clients such as uh, Justin Bieber and lots of famous stars who became famous in their early years so very early and he said if there's one thing I wish for any human being on this planet is that he or she does not become famous before the age of 25 minimum mm -hmm. he said because of the uh, the development of the brain, it takes around 25 years for the brain to develop completely and then right. to be able to tolerate that level of superstardom and fame he said the impact of becoming that famous too soon is that that dopamine hit and release that you get and you know that excretion of you know that wow factor so it has some type of negative impact on the young mind to the point now yeah. where because they've experienced such highs that nothing gets them going anymore and they fall into states of depression very easily and his clients uh, his list of clients include the likes of Justin Bieber. So my point here is, even though this brother is a, a, a Muslim celebrity, if you like, right, he is still um, having to deal with the consequences of fame and superstardom at a very young age. Yeah. In this instance, he's a Qari, but that comes with a lot of trials. And one of those trials, Ahi, is the fitna of women throwing them at your feet. <laughs> and I am, listen, I am so glad that I didn't have to do. That's why I just stay silent because I don't know what it feels like to be a massive celebrity at a young age, having all these women throwing themselves at me left and right. You yeah. know, everyone knows me wherever I go. Sisters want to marry me. I don't know what that feels like, especially at the 19, 20, 21. That must be a huge fit now. Yeah. So when you see that, and, you, and I put this post on my YouTube the other day, it's, um, it's a quote by, what's his name now? The name of this, uh, John Bradford. And okay. the quote goes as follows. He says, there, but for the grace of God, go I. There, but for the grace of God, go I. I, I put this post up after I was sat next to a disa disabled boy. Just the other mm -hmm. day, I was sat him, severely disabled boy. And it reminded me of this quote. There, but for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that could have been me. Yeah. It could have been me. You know? So, when you see stories like this, like this brother Fatih, what he's going through right now, the most you should say is, you know what, alhamdulillah, that's not me, man. And furthermore, let me check myself. How do I conduct myself in private? Because God forbid, if you're messing up in private, if, you are, if you're not patterning it up in, in private, then sometimes the way that Allah rectifies your affairs is by making them come out in public. Yeah. Because he wants good for you. He wants you to desist from this. But the only way for that to happen is for it to come out. But now you've got to go through this humiliation and your, your reputation is in tatters. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you, you touched off on several points that I, you know, I want to talk about. One is like, you know, just these scandal mongers in general is not having life. I mean, I wrote about this in my recent book about trolls. And it's like, you know, you have to have one very, very empty life to actually go around chasing around the Internet looking at, oh, this one's doing this, that one's doing this, what's he doing, following this, following that. I mean, I, I literally don't have time to, to, I literally only watch like your content and like sometimes the fresh and fit guys, sometimes. And I never get to finish their stuff. I even stop watching Kevin Samuels. I mean, but generally I don't really consume a lot of content. I, I get the stuff that people send me. You have to have an empty life to actually just sit around and chase that stuff. So you're right about that. That's the first thing that I, I agree with you on hundred percent. The next thing is, 
is you're also absolutely right. Bill Burr, the comedian, actually talked about what you just said. He's like, you don't understand what these guys are going through. You know, alhamdulillah, I'm not saying I go through what these guys go through, but alhamdulillah, whether people on the internet agree or not, I, I've grown up as a good looking guy. I've had women throw themselves at me, not like to the level of these guys, but I know what it's like to a degree, probably not to their degree. But like Bill Burr was saying, it's like, you know, all these people, all these guys out there judging, especially men out here judging this guy, if he did fall into something, we don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying just in general, if he did fall into something, what do you know about his life? It's like, like Bill Burr said, you've got a guy who comes outside and there's a busload of Swedish women throwing themselves at you like, oh my gosh, it's so-and-so. You know, you don't know what it's like to just have everywhere you turn, beautiful women throwing themselves at you. And then like Bill Burr said himself, he's like, you with your 80, you know, 85 over BMI with your Prius parked behind the tr garbage truck. You don't know what it's like. Stop trying to judge this guy, you know? And it's not, it's, I'm not even saying that we can't judge the guy. You know, I mean, we also know from, you know, Omar, I think it was, or, or Uthman, I, can't, I think it was Omar, who said, you know, we judge by what's apparent, but what are you going to do in that situation? It's very easy to talk about a situation you know you'll never end up in. It's very easy to talk about it. But the moment that fitna is thrown at you, yeah, Abdullah, what are you going to do? Very easy to come up with hypotheticals. Yeah, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be like this, and I'm going to be like that. And then yeah. we see more. Um, you can say it yourself. Tell me yourself. You're, you're in London, right? I think you're in like, in the, you know you're in the UK. How far, how far off London? Yeah, Luton. Yeah. How many brothers have we seen get a curveball of fitness thrown at them and bang, <laughs> they get smacked in the teeth, surprised yeah. that he'd ended up in a situation. And then he's like, yo, bro, I don't know what to do. Bro, I ended up, and you're like, hey, hey, hey hold, on, hold on, we ain't confessionalists here, man. Just speaking hypotheticals. I've mm -hmm. seen this hundreds of times. Not, I'm not even exaggerating when I say hundreds of times where brothers said, I never thought I'd end up in a situation like this. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So, you know, that's a tough one, man. Make the offer to dude. If you truly, if you're sincere, if you're really, really like into the issue, make the offer to brother. You know, over there like on the internet typing some stuff brings no benefit. Mishfa'idah to you, especially, mm -hmm. you know, because you got to think about your accountability in front of Allah and your Muqiyam with that one. You just jump right in. It's like, wow, you don't even know what the truth is. You're just going to start swinging? Okay, homie. MashaAllah. <laughs> yeah, no, 100. And, you know, what you said there that you don't know how you would be in that situation, how you would behave in that situation. You reminded me of the ayah, the other ayah in the same surah where Allah says in Surah Nur, um, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan, wa man yattabi'a khutuwati shaytani, fa innahu ya'muru bil fahshai wal munkar. So, oh, uh, you, oh, you who believe, don't follow in the footsteps of shaitan. What's Allah referring to here? Uh, and again, I'm not positioning myself as an Islamic authority or anything like this, but the Prophet said, share from me even if you only know one eye. I'm sharing from the little that I know, right? And that is that nobody wakes up one day and says, oh, you know what, today I'm going to commit zina. Big man thing. Yesterday I was praying all night, today I'm going to commit zina. It doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like this. The small thing, slowly, 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 slowly. The smallest, smallest, smallest thing. And you think you can compete with Shaitan on this? He has the whole of humanity's history to draw upon. The big encyclopedia of how to make humans trip, how to yep. get you guys tripping. You can't, you can't contest him on that. So, even those little tiny footsteps that you feel take you close to it. Be cautious of them and check yourself. And it's a constant process. You have to, I'm constantly having to check myself. Constantly. You know, yeah, yeah. I, there's something else you said that I wanted to cover also about the, the age of maturity and mental development. You know, um, I think you, you've you experienced, I, I'm pretty sure you've experienced with this, this whole internet thing. And l let me say, internet fame or infamy, I wish on no one. Mm. You know, I mean, it's really tough. Don't, don't imagine that the attacks don't bother you. I mean, they do, but they don't. I mean, it rolls off my back, but all it's done is it's just made me like really snappy on my responses. People are like, I'm American, you're so rude, you're so harsh, you're so this. It's just like, yeah, that's what you get. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is what it does to you. It causes a particular part of your personality to just wall off. Mm. My homies and my brothers, you see how I am with them. I'm, you know, alhamdulillah, you're my men's community. So you see that, I, you know, I'm like I'm an affable guy. I like to think I am, you know, I'm an affable, polite, nice guy. But, you know, when it comes down to non-homies, it's kind of like just double barrels. So I can't, I can't imagine being at the same place now that I was maybe if I was 25. It would be rough. 
I would I would hate to be in that position because back when I was 25, 26, I would have taken it a lot more personal. I think I would have been a people think I'm harsh now. I think I'd have been like absolutely cruel now. Mm. You know, had had I actually come across the internet and like fame or whatever, or in my case, infamy, like I have now, it would be very difficult. I don't wish it on any young person, you know, it's a tough place to be. No, 100%. It's actually, a, it's a brutal place to be. The, the yeah. internet is a brutal place. I don't know how a lot of these young kids deal with it. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, these young kids who blow up massively? Wallahi, I don't know how they deal with it. You know, because most of them are regular kids and they've got some quirk in their personality that just happen to resonate with millions of people at the right time. Like, uh, what's her name? Charlie D'Amelio, for example. She just put up mm. dancing videos. Next thing you know, she's got 100 million followers on TikTok. She has no clue what the hell happened to her. But that yeah. came with a ton of heat at 14. At 14. That's crazy. You know? That's crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, wallahi. But like, as I was saying, it's a constant job having to check yourself. A constant job. Constantly having to check yourself because those footsteps are so insidious. They are so insidious. They come in the most minute. Sometimes it's not even the shaitan is trying to make you do something bad. He's just trying to prevent you from doing something good. So let's say, for example, you're in the habit of, I don't know, praying four rak'ah before dhuhr or after dhuhr. Oh, it's okay. Two today. It's okay. What's the big deal? You're still praying too. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. May Allah save us. You know, so again, to, the, to those of you in the chat right now, if you see this type of thing, story coming out, say, Alhamdulillah, that's not me. Yep. And then go back to your private life and assess yourself and say, you know what? I'm tripping up here. I'm messing up there. Let me tidy this all up right now because my hands are not clean either. My hands are not clean either. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, this goes into like the hadith where the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, you know, on day of Yom Kiyama, a person will look to his left, look to his right, and he'll only see his own deeds. He ain't going to see the person next to him, his deeds. Don't worry about people. It's, it's the same applies right in this life, really. I mean, because this is the place where the deeds are built up. So looking left and right, what this person's doing, what that person's doing, say, Alhamdulillah, I'm not in that person's position. Alhamdulillah, may Allah protect me from being in that person's position. May Allah make me in this person's position if you're looking at someone more righteous than you. But like all this, like carrying on and getting on the internet about this stuff, man, I don't know what the what the obsession or the love with that is. I really don't. It's a really weird thing. The obsession with what in particular, Achi? This obsession with like scandals online. It's, 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 I find it like almost a mental illness. Mm. I really do. I mean, even in even in my book, I talk about it. It, it to a degree. It has been classified as a type of mental illness. This obsession with other people and all this type of stuff. It's kind of like there is something wrong with you. If you, you know, <laughs> I don't know what, but yeah. I mean, it might be a first world problem. I mean, you know, when we live in comfort, there's not really much to do. It's not like I have to go and hunt or True. True. my wife has to go to the river to get buckets of water. We just don't have enough to do. And, and when you don't get enough... killed by a hippopotamus while she's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm <just> saying. <laughs> right. And the yeah. devil makes work for idle hands, you know? <laughs> I had a brother actually the other day. He's actually a good friend of mine. Well, lie, he's a good friend of mine. And if he sees this, because I know he watched my videos, you know I got love for you, bro. But he said this statement. I was like, wow, bro, you actually said that. And he said to me, Matt, you know what? I can't lie. I've been really enjoying this fresh and fit drama the past few days. <laughs> I was like, bro. Even if you're thinking it, don't tell me. Don't say it, man. Don't say I that. I couldn't watch any of it. I couldn't watch any of it. I couldn't finish any of it. Not one video of that stuff could I finish. I started really? like three and I couldn't finish any of them. I got about like two minutes in. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I hear that. I hear that, Achi. Yeah, it's some, it's some quirk in human nature. We like drama. Khair, inshallah. Um, Abu American, where would you like to take this, Ach? Any Any topics that you had particularly you wanted to touch on? Man, there's so much. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I'm going to be doing a series uh, for my channel members on <laughs> this topic of single mothers. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, Bismillah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's take it there. Allah Akbar. So in, anyway, you guys get like a general idea where I'm going to go with this. Look, guys, with single mothers, man, this is, this is a matter of personal choice, but it's personal choice that can have consequences. Just everything is a personal choice in life. You know, and you got good, you got bad, and you got those things which are unknown. But, you know, in terms of marrying single mothers, this is this is something that has a pretty consistent pattern in it that has always ended up bad, you know. And um, I mean, I've done it and I've had it go good one time and I've had it go bad the rest of the times. So and I always say I try 
everything so you don't have to. I've literally experimented with this and I said, you know what? Everybody else did this wrong because I read the books. I read the red pill. I read this. I read the game. And I'm like, all right, they missed this part. Mm. And there's, it's not a missing piece to the puzzle. It's not, it's not missing. I didn't, there was no piece that they missed in that regard. Human nature is human nature in the proper understanding of the Akita of human nature. You know, how Allah has pre, you know, given us predispositions and behaviors. You're not going to, you're not going to escape the cycles. There will be exceptions. And if you play a numbers game, then yes, you can find the exceptions, but on the norm, you're going to run into the same old problems, which are, you know, predominantly that's going to be the expectation for you to, you know, take on a role of a man that's alive, AKA a father figure of a man that's alive. Generally. I mean, unless the woman's a widow, but then she's not classified as a single mother. Now is she? No. You know, you're going to have the financial aspect to where two parents who are obligated to take care of that child, both of them check out and they expect you, the new incoming man, to take care of that child. You're not going to escape that, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's all sorts of other hiccups and problems that you run into, especially if you have, you know, children of your own from another wedding or another marriage or whatnot, in terms of like who's permissible to who and being covered, uncovered, all this type of stuff. It's a lot of problems, you know. And, you know, I understand these sisters need to be married, but you also have to understand the complica- complications and problems that are attached and associated with it. And they're not, they're not insignificant. Mm. I think people underestimate how significant and how much of a problem this is. And sisters get really upset about this, you know, but they don't understand themselves because they just look at the position and the situation from their position of need. I need right. a husband, you know, right. this, I need a husband. So everything else associated with it, they don't really think about and what they're bringing with them when they do these things, you know, like look for a new husband. I'm not saying when they do these things, look for a new husband like this. I don't mean in a bad way, but then, you know, when they come into the relationship, their expectations on the man, what he should be doing, loving the children. Like, you know, he loves her because for her, it's a part of me and he loves me. You know, this whole chain, mental chain of thought that they follow this mental process and how it can literally from day one, destroy anything you want to build which is a lasting relationship you know it's it's a real it's a real issue and brothers really need to stop and talk to people who have done it and understand that there's a ton of pitfalls that can actually ruin this relationship it can't work yes absolutely but the chances especially in the 21st century they're very low so think about this stuff before you actually take action on it. I'm not saying don't do it. This is a personal choice. There's nothing haram in it. I don't speak bad about single mothers, you know, but understand that also at the same time, even though you don't speak bad about them, there are problems associated with it. Right. I mean, you know, I made a video uh, recently and um, the title of the video was Step Parents Are a Risk. That was the title of the video. And it was okay. off the back of... Um, uh, uh, some statistics that I took from Dr. Warren Farrell's book, The Boy Crisis. I actually heard it in another uh, podcast as well by, um, I forget his name now, Saad God. That's right, that's his name. And he, the question was asked, what factor predisposes a child to the highest likelihood of, um, and let me be careful with the words I choose because I don't want to trigger the algorithm, of being graped, let's just call it. By oh, yeah, I got you being graped by uh, an adult and that mm-hmm. factor was the presence of a step parent usually a step father specifically children who are in contact and i say that as a step parent myself but mm-hmm. children you see we have to be this is an objective truth children who are um in contact with a stepfather are uh, have a 100 times and let me say that again 100 times greater likelihood of being graped or treated incorrectly i'm choosing my words carefully because of the algorithm Indeed. really fussy about this stuff um than if there were than any other factor in the world that that you could possibly think of yeah. and then i had a sister dm me in my inbox i believe she's a single mom and she says to me said she said to me brother why did you make that video for you're you're making us lose hope I said to her sister, because it's an objective reality, it's the truth. And her response to me was, but you're making us lose hope. And my response back to her was, but this is an objective truth. What do you want me to do, sell you sweet lies? And it reminds me of what the media has done for so long, profited off of the backs of women by selling them sweet lies. Tell them what they want to hear, Derek Jackson. You know, 
sell, sell them the sweet, beautiful asal and honey of how the world is so great and perfect and you go, go. And all. No, this is an objective reality. And I offered her a solution. I said to her sister, you know, there are solutions here. Most probably you're not a widow. Most probably, right? If you're not a widow, give the kids to their father. Oh, he's a deadbeat dad. And so, says who? I don't want to hear that. Yep. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Every ex-wife says the dad is a deadbeat dad. At one point, my ex-wife said the same about me. Allah Allah, maybe she even still thinks it. Every woman says her ex-husband is a deadbeat father. Why? It's self-preservation. If, yeah. I, if I, as a woman, can tell the world that the ex was a deadbeat father, that mm -hmm. gives me the green card to explain why I had to leave him, right? So now there will be no repercussions. People won't look down negatively upon me. That's why I say, gentlemen, take this, uh, he was a deadbeat dad with a pinch of salt, with yeah. a pinch of salt, because it's a, it's a loaded statement. It's a loaded statement. Give the kids to their dad. And then yeah. start again. Okay, it's not ideal. I understand you're going to miss your children. Well, guess what? Choices and trade-offs, baby. Choices and trade-offs. Would you There's want to be married? There's consequences. You want to be married? Okay, fine. Yes, we need our sisters to be married. You know, we don't want them to fall into haram and all of these things. We have to find good solutions for them. We have to find solutions. Now, if you're a widow, it's, you know... Widows, separate story, completely. Entirely. Story. You know, your, your husband passed away. It's not your fault. Of course not. You know, you still, however, have to be careful. Before I married my wife, she was my third wife on my roster at that time. <laughs> on my roster. And um, she said to me, one of the most important things that I was looking out for before considering a husband was, can I trust this man around my children, around my daughter specifically? Yeah. It's genuine concern And that is the smart way to go about it Sisters, if you are considering Marrying again and you have children Specifically daughters You need to ask yourself this question And really the best thing, if you can Give the girls back to their father Especially once they reach age Especially yeah. You know, just risk mitigation we're, we're mitigating risk here Yeah, yeah. I talked about this in the group. I don't know if you saw that conversation. We had this conversation in the group recently. I mean, in the men's community. I don't know if you saw it. I mean, there's a lot of conversations going on there. Probably like, you know, 10,000 conversation points by the time you check it. <laughs> but yeah, we talked about this recently, you know. I mean, I, I, I even have a personal experience with this. And it's not like, you know, I'm not, alhamdulillah, I'm not a threat, I'm not a danger. But I've noticed something. It's like, you know, like I said, I've married a single mother and she, she came with daughters. And it's like, they were all immature. Now they're starting to hit maturity. And when you're walking around the house, you're just like, wait, what the heck? You know, it's like, they're still dressing like goofy kids, but they're not kids anymore. Right, right. And it's right. like, okay, now this is inappropriate. Yeah. So, so, you know, true. and it, it, I mean, it doesn't, you know, it's not a problem for me, but it's just like, okay, like, yeah, we need to have this talk to where it's like, you know, you need to also understand that with growing age and growing whatever else, you know, your responsibility to cover a different way is also necessary. Mm -hmm. And so if you got like, you know, you got terrible dudes out there or terribly weak dudes, then... You know, you're going to have terrible uh, outcomes and results. And that's, um, I mean, yeah, it's something to be thought about. Even our own blood daughters, even our own daughters, once they hit of age and they start maturing, they need to cover themselves appropriately. Cover yourselves appropriately, sisters. Don't give me this. Listen, I understand, but it doesn't matter. Out of respect, Yanni, for your father, yeah. out of respect, have some humor, have some shame. Like, make yourself, do you, you understand? Like, cover yourself, woman. What the hell? That's your dad, man. Just it, it's a shyness, a bit of shyness, a bit of shame. Yeah, I have a question here in the super chat. Uh, Suli Ashraf, Zakala Khair, Akhi for the two pound super chat. Appreciate it, bro. How do you avoid excessive love towards your wife, Abu American? Please, talk about I mean, what's excessive love? Excessive love might be, I mean, excessive if it's like going beyond, you know, above and beyond where it's like, you know, it's unreasonable, then yeah, that is a problem. But loving your wife and loving her deeply and dearly, that's not a problem. I mean, I love, I love my wife very deeply, I love my wives very deeply, you know. Um, excessive you just need to remember that she's a human you know stop making the apotheosis of women i talk about this all the time stop making them into angelic beings they're not angels they don't want to be angels they don't want to be treated like angels you have to also you know one thing that i like to do is i always like to i joke with my girl i call her goofy and all these the type of other stuff and that's you know i always look i don't i look for her faults but not to pick on her but i look at her faults and i'm just like look at this you just a regular human just like me so whenever they come with that stuff that a lot of women do you know it's like you know they walk around on perfect you know and i made your life so much better i'm like yeah you're the goof person who like couldn't even you know reach the top shelf or whatever else i just crack little jokes or whatever else you know and uh you rile them up and bring down that little bring that humanness out of them you know because if you let them and this is a problem what you're seeing here is not a matter of like only personal perspective this is also a matter of framing a relationship this also tells me that if 
you have excessive love towards your wife, she controls the frame of the relationship because she's also selling the idea that I'm perfect to you and that your life would be incomplete and not whole without me. Mm. And so now you come to find, or I'm coming to find by, you know, when I read statements like this, is that most of these men are in the frame of the women. And, um, you know, you also, so you need to look at that also, excuse me, when the woman is in your frame, this, the roles reverse. She starts looking at you and trying to make you perfect. At least that's the, that's the way I find it most of the time, you know? And, um, yeah. Yeah. I think the problem is if a Suli, this love is go, taking you to the point where you're making concessions that you know you shouldn't be. And you know it. It's kind of, you're like, you know, man, I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have allowed that. Or you Im implemented a boundary and then maybe she sweet talked to you and you said, okay, fine, let it go. That's not excessive love. That's just you losing frame, period. What would you say to that, uh, Abu American? Making yeah, I mean, concessions like just over and over again. Concessions I made a video about that. Uh, I, I said, is, is it, was it compromise or capitulation? Most guys, they say they're compromising, but when you really look at the situation, it's capitulation. You mm. know, the, 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 for those of you who don't know, capitulation is to surrender. You know, it's like you're not making a compromise, you're surrendering. And so, this is, yeah, this is also a thing. Definitely. Definitely, I think this is a frame thing more than anything else. You know, she's sold the idea to, in his mind, either directly or indirectly, that, you know, she's improved his life. And it's supposed to be the other way around. You're supposed to improve her life. Whether we want it, whether guys want to hear that or not, that's the fact of the matter. You make her life better, generally. Even if, even if it's a matter of like she comes from an economic strata here, and you bringing her here because you know she comes from a rich family, and you're marrying her. Her life is still improved because you're still a top quality guy. You're the most top quality guy that she has access to. You know, so maybe you can't match the money, but you, from your social, your game, your understanding, social dynamics, all these other things, you top up where you can't in money, and you, of course, you work on your money. Mm. And I will, I will add to that as well that sisters, you know, we're not undermining your the importance your your the importance of your role in a relationship. Not at you all. Know, uh, Rolo says it all the time. We are better together than we are apart. The most successful CEOs and uh, business owners and you know the, the richest guys in the world they're all married. Very very rare, very rare you'll find one who's not married. Okay, maybe Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates are divorced now, but they were married that whole time. Why? Because marriage provides a man with a level of grounding. You know, it grounds you. You realize, right, I've got responsibility here. Right, I'm having kids with this woman. I need to pattern up. I can't be going out with the kid with, with, with the, the, the homies all night long. And it provides you with that grounding, you know. And this is a great thing. This is a beautiful thing. We are better together than we are apart. It's true. It's absolutely, absolutely. true. Um, Atiyah, shukran for the $2 super chat. Is it mandatory to wear the niqab? Fadal uh, Abu American. It depends on which scholar you follow. The, the, there's a difference of opinion. The vast majority, I'm, I'm Salafi, the vast majority of the Salafi ulama hold that it is obligatory. Sheikh Alabani was one of the exceptions. He held that it was not, although his women wore it. So it wasn't something that he enforced in his house, but his women, they, they wore the niqab, even though he was one of the few who held that it was not mandatory. Hmm. That's All what right. I know. Perfect. Zakallah khair. Do this, Abdul Hamid. Zakallah khair, akhi. Assalamu alaikum, brother Abdul Hamid here. About to go to work soon, so won't be here for much long. But love what you guys are continuously doing. Abdul Hamid, always showing that love. Really appreciate it, bro. Zakallah khair. He's from your men's community, uh, Abdul Hamid. Shukran, Habib. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair. Inshallah. Right. <clears throat> yeah, just to the guys in the chat. Guys, you know... When you guys are going backwards and forwards and having these cat fights with the sisters in the chat, you do realize, number one, you're bringing yourself down to that emotional realm, the emotional level, right? And then number two, you're giving them the attention that they wanted, wanted in the first place. Whether it's positive or negative is irrelevant. Just like Abu American sure. said the other week, the currency is irrelevant. Crypto, dollars, pounds, euros is all the same. Attention is attention. Stop this nonsense. Wallah, please stop this nonsense. Going on yeah. and on. Listen to the flipping thing or or don't, you know. And if you're in the chat, please also um just, uh, like the video, much appreciate it. I think we have how many people we have here? We've got 70 you guys watching and 15 likes. Please hit that like and sub the channel. Come on, guys, hit the like. Inshallah. Yeah, hit that like, sub the channel. <laughs> you hear you click to get here, you can click the like button. Mashallah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just go. I want to cover that point also, man. You be, 
guys need to understand that this is an attention thing. You know, women actually know guys don't like to lose fights. And so they'll start fights because that's the easiest way. This goes into relationships. You see this in your household also. Not, alhamdulillah, I learned. But, you know, most of the time, guys in their household, the only time their woman has their fullest attention is when they're arguing with them. That's why you end up in so many arguments. Because that's when she has your complete attention. Now you want to come here and repeat the same thing in the chat. It's like, come on, guys. When are you going to get it? When are you going to learn? She's got your attention. That's why she's arguing with you. Not because she has some sort of dog in the fight. Mm. She's just keeping. She might actually. This sister might actually believe Nakab is is obligatory. I don't know. I don't care. The point is, it serves her in terms of her attention and her need for attention to continue the fight. Mm. Absolutely. Give women attention. You give them fuel. Abdul Hamid. Once again, barakallahu fiik. Yep. Zahlakar. No, I actually had. Um... I had uh, what's his name, Baba Ali, on the uh, on, on a live stream yesterday. Man, that brother was dropping some gems, Allah Mubarak. But one thing he said, uh, Abu American, mm -hmm. was that even he runs a, a Muslim dating matrimonial service. It's called Half Hour Dean, and he was saying even in the Muslim world, all women are chasing the top ten percent of men. Even amongst the Muslim sisters, it's not just a black thing or in the non-Muslim community. You know, Kevin Samuels touches on this all the time. No, he said it's just everywhere. All women are chasing the top 10% of brothers. But then he said to the sister, he said, sister, you want this top 10% brother, fine. But does he want you? Do you have what he wants? You have to ask yourself, are you on his level? What advice, Akhi, Abu American, would you give, particularly the younger sisters who are in their prime and could potentially, you know, um, ha have stronger negotiating position? What advice would you give them considering that, you know, the time is not forever? I had a sister come on the live stream yesterday, 31 years old, French sister. And she said to me, you know, she was, she was confessing her mistakes, basically. Jazakallah khair. And she said, I made a mistake. Like, I believe that I can live life happily without a man. And here I am, 31, never been married. I'm still chaste, never been married. And I'm, you know, I'm finding it hard to find a husband. So what advice would you give sister Zaki who may be holding out for some, that something better, even though potentially... You know, the, their ideal match is right in front of them, right here, right now. Ooh, that's a lot. I mean, first off, understand, we're going to use some terms here, but understand we're speaking in halal terms, people, please. We're going to talk about what's called SMV, sexual market value. We can just call it the marriage market value because we're Muslims, but understand it all boils down to that. Everybody's trying to get married so we can make kids. So women start off at a high position. Youth and beauty are the most sought after thing by all men of all groups. Young men want young and beautiful women. Old men want young and beautiful women. Now we've seen some statistics. Obviously these come from non-Muslim websites, but it's a good, you know, it's a good place to check from. I think if we went to all these Muslim matrimonial apps, we'd find similar that most of the men are aiming for the youngest women on these matrimonial sites. Mm. So it gives us a baseline to understand male behavior, wants, and desires. And even conversation with men will tell you the same. So women start off here, men start off here. So an 18-year-old woman is here when it comes down to her market value or marriage market value. And an 18-year-old man is here because women are, men are made. And so he has to make himself and he has to build himself. So by the time he's hitting like his, his let's say, early to mid-30s, He's like really starting to like, you know, crescendo hit his peak. But at the same time, the youth and beauty of the woman is going down. There's not a year that goes by that she doesn't get older. You know, things start coming like this, you know, so they're crossing paths. Mm. So by the time a man reaches his like, you know, his 40s, he should he's he's if he's kept himself physically fit and whatnot, you know, let's say, well, let's not even go as high as 40s. Let's say he's like his mid 30s. He's at his peak. He's at his physical peak, financial peak. You know, everything's going right for him. His mentality is starting to get straightened out and everything really well. He's at his peak. Who's at his peak in the female zone? 18-year-olds. Mm. And in general, we also know from statistics that women like older men. It's almost like there's a system here. It's almost like there's a pattern by a divine being that um, put this into the quote-unquote nature of humans. So what we have is men who like younger women and women generally like older men, not significantly older. But now we see that, okay, this starts to match. Youth and beauty women, older men. Now, we're not going to go into the whole age marriage thing. But the point is, when you are at your youngest is when you have the most negotiating power as a woman. Mm. 
And you really need to capitalize on that as quickly as possible. Wasting time waiting for Mr. Perfect. There's always going to be a Mr. Perfect. There's always going to be a younger and beautiful woman out there. Women get mad when guys are always like, oh, you always want something younger and prettier. You always want this. But then when women do the same thing in terms of like the more high value and more successful man and the better man and this, that, the other, nobody says a word. But you're doing the same thing just in reverse. Mm. How is it different? So score the highest possible value man that you can at your earliest years because that's when you have the most leverage in terms of looking for a partner. Waiting and waiting and waiting, it brings you nothing but loneliness. And like then you got these sisters out here, like this 31-year-old sister. She's she's got guys hitting on her, but nobody will marry her. Mm. Or there's nobody she wants to marry. That you're gonna come to find sisters that there's a lot of guys out there that want you, but they don't want to marry you. Ooh, big difference. The two are not the same. There's guys that want you all day. And we're even talking about the Muslims here. I've heard horror stories. There's a lot of sisters. There's guys that want you all day. That doesn't mean they want to marry you. Mm. So you, you need to, I, this isn't something that you should like waste your time on. Oh, guys are still coming. That's great. No, it's not great. It's not great. Cause maybe one out, maybe three out of like seven or three out of 10, they're, they're going to be very serious about marrying you. Some guys just want to entertain, you know, can I chat her up this, that, the other, some guys want to actually try and, you know, take it a, a step further and see what they can actually get out of the whole deal. Three or four might actually be serious about like, look, let me try and marry the sister. And if you're like shooting these guys down, how long you got? How long you can do this? I met a sister, Ethiopian. I know I'm carrying on here, but just give me, I'll just be my last little example. I met this Ethiopian sister and, she, you know, we wanted to get married at one point. And I was asking, I was like, you know, you're, I was like, why didn't you get married earlier? You know, cause I liked her, but I was, you know, I was kind of like, eh, I can probably get younger and better. And I actually did, you know, she was like, well, you know, guys were coming, you know, I was young, this, that, the other, and they kept coming. You said, and just one day they stopped coming. Mm, subhanallah. Don't let that be you. Yeah. No. Um, and I've heard this story more than once. Subhanallah. Yeah. I mean, without going into too much detail, just to kiss my family, see this. But even in my own family, my own extended family, we've had women who the door was knocking throughout their 20s, suitor after suitor after suitor after suitor. And then one day, as literally the way it was described to me was the, the individual told me one day the door stopped knocking yeah. and that was it. it and that's does. exactly what happens. The door stops knocking. Why? Because there's now newer sisters. Now, I know a lot of sisters might hear this thing. Oh, I'm under pressure. I'm 28, 29, 30. You're making me feel pressured. Yes, sister, you should feel pressured. This is good. You know why this is good? Because now maybe you have a different lens to operate from when it comes to the type of man you are looking for. You may think that you want this, this, that, and the third. But actually, you know what? Perhaps this brother over here is a really good brother. You know, if everyone was exceptional, if every man was exceptional, nobody would be exceptional. No. Nope. I understand you want the except. I get it. All right. I get it. But it's unlikely. So look for the brother who his dean is, is, is in check. He's stable. You know, is he going to treat you right? Khalas, alhamdulillah. It's, it's, it's either that or being single. And he yeah. pick your poison. But they don't see it, bro. They, they do this very same thing reversed. They say, oh, I got a friend. You know, I think you should meet her. She's beautiful. Then you meet her and you're like, wait, where's the beautiful girl? <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh, no. I'm like, and then when you talk to her, say, like, hey, look, your friend, you know, she's not, she's not kind of, you know, she's not really what I'm looking for in terms of looks. No, she's beautiful. What are you talking about? This, that, the other. She's got a great person. I was like, yeah, we ain't talking about her inner beauty. You know, we're, I got to look at her in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. They try and sell you these, like, you know, half-baked sisters. I'm not trying to be rude. You know, I mean, they're created how Allah created them. Maybe he's, Maybe she's something for somebody else. You know, right. and then when it comes down to the brothers, they don't want to hear those concessions. They don't want to hear how he's a good brother. He's got potential. He's working on himself. He's doing well. This, that, the other. Nah, we ain't hearing that. Right, right. Yeah, the potential. We ain't hearing that. And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> let me let me share something with you right now, Aki, because you reminded me. Let me just get this up. Hold on. I'm going to pull it up for you. Because that that part where you said we can't see that inner beauty. That's that's you reminded <laughs> me of this. Yeah, this yeah. I'm about to show you it now. The Mugabe school of course. Oh, did you see it? Did you see it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, right. I'm gonna sort of share this screen. <laughs> That's a good one. Right, let's open this share this screen. Share screen. We have share screen. Share screen. 
entire screen. Yes. Okay. Can you see that? Oh, a thousand different. Yeah, you scare. You, you got to share the the the, the tab. Okay. I think it's like share Chrome tab, and then don't forget to click the audio also. All right. Chrome tab. Oh, there. Yes. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. Let's play this real quick. If you are ugly, you are ugly. Stop talking about inner beauty. Men do not walk around with the X-rays to see your inner beauty. <laughs> 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 Who is that from? <laughs> Mugabe. <laughs> Mugabe. <laughs> 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 this had to be in absolute pieces. I was in pieces, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's is true. Screen, is the screen still sharing or is it? No, 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 it's gone. Back to normal. I was in pieces. And I know that, oh, how dare you say ugly? Okay, fine. Let's, you know, soften our words. If you're uh, less attractive, sister, we don't care about your inner beauty, Annie. You have to pass the eyeball test. Actually, I said this on my live yesterday. I was once in, once in communication about American with a sister a number of years ago. And as a result of having had bad experiences beforehand of sisters catfishing me, I said to the sister, sister, before I meet you, I, I need to have a FaceTime call with you to make sure that you are you. Yeah, mm. I know you are you. So we did the FaceTime call. I was like, okay, alhamdulillah, you know, the sister passes the eyeball test. Great. You know, I'm not looking for a supermodel. Just pass the, the damn eyeball test. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I said, okay, uh, sort it out. Uh, get your wily ready. We're going to meet up in Charlotte Town. Okay, right. Fantastic. We met up in uh, some place uh, with her family. Abu American, when I tell you, my heart dropped out my backside. Damn. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and it, the drop-off was so substantial. I don't know what, maybe she had a filter on in that video call that we had. Maybe she was with the lighting, the angles, but that person I met in real life was not the person that I met on the phone. And a word of warning to the sisters, I know you want to put your best foot forward when you are presenting yourself. Maybe, you know, you, uh, you're showing a photo of yourself and so on. Let me give you a small piece of advice. Let's say you are, I'm going to put a number in it. Let's say you are naturally uh, a, a 7 out of 10 in, in looks, beauty, okay? Or a 6 out of 10. Send a photo where you look one point less, 5 out of 10. If you're a 7, 6 out of 10. Little bit less, not a lot, little bit. Why? Because That's now you have room for improvement, you see? When he sees you, he's going to be like, so he accepted that picture. And then when he meets you, he's like, whoa. You look even better in real life. But the mistake you ladies are making is you look worse in real life because of these stupid filters and the angles and God knows what else you're using. And then you wonder why brothers sometimes get cold feet at the last minute. Because I'm, yeah. it's not, I'm telling you, it was not the same human being. Abu American, I dropped her then and there, respectfully. And you know what? I never told her why. Mm. why I never told her, so yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I That's fair enough, too. I never, I never told her why because even though that upset her, telling her why would have been much worse than simply staying silent. I could have bruised her ego for life. I didn't want to do that, you know. I didn't want to say to her like my heart fell out my backside. <laughs> but it's, you know, when you're playing games with these, and the yeah. truth is, the truth is, maybe she wasn't that unattractive. Maybe she was okay, but she had anchored me so high that what I saw in the end. Was the drop off was too substantial? Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, such yeah. a big difference. It was scary. She it was literally scary. catfished you. Right, exactly. Let me pull this up real quick. That's some solid yeah. advice, though. Yeah, like just just a little bit. Take a bit off, little bit. I'm not telling you to take much off. Show your best. When he sees you, he'll be even more impressed. E machine Zakalah for the four pound forty nine super chat. Salamu alaikum. A non Muslim friend of mine said polygyny. Polygyny was selfish as you are not considering the feeling of wife and children. How does one respond? Please, Akhi American, tafaddal. <laughs> I mean, to a degree, it is selfish. Polygyny is for you. But at the same time, here, see, this is one of the problems. This is one of the reasons why I like the single household idea because it, it makes you into one family. This whole idea that you're separate families, you're separate people, this, that, the other, unless there's like an absolute warring battle between the women. I just don't see the necessity of it because you are supposed to be one family. So this is this is the beauty of trying to do the one household thing. 
Is it going to work always? No, absolutely not. But this entire concept and idea that you keep separate houses and everything and in separate families and you don't meet, you know, I don't want to know she exists. I don't want to hear about her, this, that, the other. That's that can actually, you know, lead to a situation where you don't consider the feelings of the wife and the children, because now you even start to compartmentalize your families mm. when really you only have one family mm. with the man. In her mind, maybe she has something different. But you need to, you know, uh, disabuse her of that idea, inshallah, because the simple fact of the matter is you are one family. But this comes from the mentality of the people who believe in, like, the nuclear household and whatnot. The same person probably, I'm just guessing here, this person probably believes that you shouldn't live with your parents, you know, <laughs> at an older age. You know, that you're a loser if you do it. You know, my mom used to live with me because I didn't want her to be alone, you know. I mean, so it's probably the same mentality type of person, the Western nuclear family type of mentality. Right. I mean, what I'll say to that is this. Uh, I've got uh, an opposite approach to it. And uh, sister in the chat, who I'm not going to say your name now, but you keep paying me money to put comments on. I'm not going to put them up. I'm not going to put them up. OK, so don't just don't buy those super chats to write comments like that. Ask a productive question or don't ask nothing at all. What I will add to that is, <clears throat> is that it is I'm going to spin it the other way around. If a man has the ability to take on multiple women and take care of them and look after them and provide for them, it would be selfish of him not to do so. That's a good Why? Point. Because men like that are few and far between. And there are plenty of women who would love to be taken care of by that type of man. This is the logic. Why is it that throughout history, always, polygyny is not new. This is not a Muslim thing. This is a human thing. Right, mm -hmm. Genghis Khan, uh, biblical, um, uh, biblical figures, uh, of course, Sulaiman, Dawood, alayhi salam. What, but what there's one common trend, though, one common denominator, and that denominator is these were men of means, they were men of means capable of taking care of these women. It Sorry. makes sense if a man is capable of taking care of more than one, then he should do his civic duty of taking care of more than one, yes, <laughs> civic. <laughs> Duty, <laughs> Superman out here. What are you talking about? It's selfish on him or of him to keep all of those resources just for one woman. And to that woman, I say it is selfish of her to want to have all of those resources just for her. How many Gucci bags can you buy, man? Really? How many homes do you need? How many cars do you need? How many dresses do you need? How many do you need? Whereas you have another sister out there who could potentially be taking care of this brother, for example, brother Abu American. You know, and then alhamdulillah, she's she, she's there's no more fitness for her. She's been taken care of by man. What are you talking about? We got this the wrong way around. You know, we got this the wrong way around. Uh, dude, Desi, my man, you you dropped another super chat, but I can't find it. So if you could just write a regular comment, inshallah, Abdul Hamid, and I'll bring it up, inshallah, Taal. I'll bring it up. I had one question here. I don't know where it's gone. And um, the question was, Abu American, what mm -hmm. rational male books would you recommend? I haven't read any of them myself. Well, I can't what rational male book? Yes, it depends on what you want to understand. If you want to understand female, uh, the the female aspect of everything, book two is excellent. But book two is really good in terms of understanding um, female behavior, uh, biology, how her biology plays into everything. Book one was more just a general, you know, male, alpha, beta, dichotomy type thing, you know, as placeholder statements, you mm. know, uh, which was which was good on its own. But in terms of like women. And understanding women and their biology and how their biology has social expressions in terms of their behaviors, book two is excellent. Book three, I have it, but I haven't read it yet. I just don't have time. Like I said, with consuming content and everything, I just haven't had time. I'm actually, I bought the physical book and I'm going to just buy the audio book. I bought, I bought uh, Aaron Clary's book. What's his name? Uh, Rich Cooper's book. And I bought, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Aaron Clary, cool. Uh, <laughs> I want to have him on the show. We should bring him on Halal Bad Boys. You know, he, he, he's more than down to come on the show. And then um, I bought Rolo's book. And I bought Aaron Clary's book and whatchamacallit, um, Rich Cooper's book on audio. And I just actually haven't had time to buy the audio for um, whatchamacallit, for Rolo. So I'm just going to buy that too and listen to it. So I'll let you know how that one is. Uh, Red Pill and Religion, I think it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't read any, have any of the books so, uh, as of yet, but I have listened to almost every single video on Rolo's channel. And the only way I do that, guys, is I put his, because he speaks slow, I put it on double speed whilst I'm working out in the gym. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm working out, pumping iron, I'm listening to his things. Um, but the reason why I recommend his podcast is because they are long and detailed and most people will never will not take the time 
to spend that amount of time going through that type of information. It's detailed, it's nitty gritty, it's yeah. not um, outrage porn whatsoever, hence why his channel is still small, but it's extremely, extremely informative. So I, I, uh, audio books, brilliant, because you can kill two birds with one stone. I can do my cardio whilst I'm listening. I can yeah. do my weights whilst I'm you know, listening. Do that, inshallah. This is the here says, Ahi, <clears throat> how men are weak nowadays. How can he take care of four wives? Well, Sister Freda, I will say to you that Brother Abu American, he has three wives. So, Bismillah, Ahi, tfaddal. Well, I mean, I think it's more of a reflection, not a reflection of the men. It's more of a reflection of the men that you come around. I think, Sister, by the way you're wording this, you know, it's a, please don't understand what I'm saying or construe it as an attack. But this comes off as very masculine. The way you're just like you, you're very confrontational in the way you're saying this. It may not appear so to you. Maybe it is. I don't know how you intended it, but I'm I'm telling you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a woman in a masculine frame. So obviously, if you are a woman in a masculine frame, what are you gonna what are you gonna attract? Feminine men. Because masculine women do not attract masculine men. You repel them. Mm. So if you're running into weak men, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing to end up around weak men all the time? Because masculine men, it's like a magnet. When when a feminine woman comes along, it's like they come together. It's you know, guys are just you can smell it almost, mm. and it's a beautiful thing. And so, what does it do? It, it brings out more masculinity in men. It brings out more strength in men. But if you're a very masculine, strong woman, whatever else, then you what you're gonna do is guys who actually like you. They're going to start trying to like, oh, yeah, I like that, too. You know, he's going to start trying to conform and bring in this whole girl type of game. You know, and he's going to try and like that sneaky game or whatever else. And it's very feminine behavior mm. because generally women have bad game. And so this is what you're attracting. You're attracting feminine, weak men. Uh, Anika, I'll be the afraid if you keep blaming men, then you will be single for single forever. And I can already I can I already know what the, the, the ladies in the chat are going to do. She's a pick me. She's a pick me. All right. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay, just because she said something that is counter or dis 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 disagrees with what you said, she's a pick me. Is that your answer? If I can't find an answer, I'm just going to say she's a pick me. Shaming tactics. But I will say to you this, sister. If she, if a sister who makes a comment like this is a pick me, then what does that make you? A please don't pick me. That's the opposite, right? So you're a don't pick me. Okay, fine. We won't pick you. But that's not an answer. This pick me business is not an answer. It's a get out of jail free card. It's a I'm going to shame you so I don't actually have to use my intellectual brain to answer what Abu American just brought to the table. This sister, she's typing some mad stuff. Which she one? She said, uh, "No, I attract masculine men, but they're weak." What? <laughs> yeah, that that's that's a feminine man. You see, Look, yeah. There's there's a, there's um there's a sister on YouTube. Your favorite, your favorite, your revert uh, YouTuber, and again, I don't want to call that personally, but she made a video a while back, and she said, "Oh, Allah, I was going to do a reaction video too," and I thought, you know what, that's enough reaction videos on this sister. And anyway, she said, "I don't know why, but I keep attracting um, uh, females, uh, lesbian females," and, and straight away, I said, "Yes, because you're behaving in a masculine way. You are attracting." Uh, submissive females who are of that sexual orientation yep. it makes perfect sense they see a dominant figure on in you yep. so to the masculine strong independent women all of that if you are finding yourself struggling to attract the type of man that you want it's probably because the type of man you want doesn't want you yeah. New smash. just a thought I, I understand what she's saying now uh, Frida, when you say I attract masculine men, but they're weak, I see what you're saying. You're running into these guys out here who who said, I grow the big beer, I get the big muscles, and women are going to like me. And they have no inner masculinity. I, I understand now. So you're looking at like a guy who fits visually the masculine concept that you're talking about. But internally, that's not him. He's not actually a masculine dude. He's, he's LARPing, live action role playing masculinity. And that's a very common thing today. So you mm. did bring a good point. Okay, I understand what you're saying now. But my, my initial point hasn't changed with that. You're still attracting what are feminine guys. You're just a feminine guy with big muscles. Right. Right. Rene, uh, post Neca, I hope I pronounced that properly. The more feminine you are, the more masculine men you will attract. Absolutely. Got it. It makes perfect sense. We are, 
we are we we are complements to one another. You see, if you are a dominant man, the last thing you want is to come home to a woman who you're going to have to fight over over flipping what you're going to watch or what you're going to eat. You just yeah. don't want that in your life. Yeah. And a lot of the time, these um, masculine women, I don't want to say strong because it's not strength. And I've covered this in the past. And that is, it is strength for a woman to be submissive. I'll say it again. It's strength when a woman is submissive. Why? Because it takes a certain level of inner strength to be able to submit to a man and trust him to lead you to a better place. That's hard. That's not easy. That's oh. difficult. In trusting essentially the direction of your life to another human being. That, my sister, is strength. Yeah. That's hard. But this whole I'm whole strong and independent, no. It's coming from a place of fear. What's the fear? The fear is I'm worried this man is going to mess up my life. Bottom line. So it's fear. Okay. And sometimes it does that does happen. But if that is your standard operating procedure, your standard standard operating position, well, you just, you know, you're just either going to attract soft weak men or you're going yeah. to be single. The choice is yours. Okay. <clears throat> Muhammad Usman, will you reply to, to Qawamun? I don't know what brother Qawamun has said. Is he in the chat right now? Uh, but to the brother, I have uh, repeatedly invited you. Akhi Qawamun, I'll say it again. Please DM me on Instagram and we can have a conversation. I have mentioned that in your comments on a number of times. I actually like brother Qawamun's comments, uh, content because he makes me laugh. So we can arrange that. But you have to, you have to DM me because I don't know what his Instagram is. Okay, inshallah, we're going to wrap this up, Abu American. Is there any concluding remarks you'd like to leave at all? No, no, not at all. Just I'm going to start the Even Phillips show again on Mondays instead of like it used to be on, on Fridays. I'll do it on Mondays now. That's about it. Next Monday, I should start the Even Phillips show again. The question and answer is on relationships. Men are men, women, females, males. I'm going to try and have guests on, but, you know, these trolls are they're ruining it for everybody. Right, inshallah, Todd. And um, any plugs you'd like to drop? Can, where can the people get hold of you? I know you've got your vetting guide. Uh, where can they get hold of you for one-on-one -on -one consultations? What else have you you got going as well? Twitter or Instagram. You can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram, at Abu American. You know, um, vetting guide is vetting guide. Working on some other stuff. So that's taking priority. I think you know about that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it, really. They can contact me on Instagram or Twitter, inshallah. Uh, I am going to be live again, inshallah, at, uh, just after 9 p.m. I'm going to be doing a call-in show. The title of the show will be Single Muslims, Why Are You Still Single? That will be at 9 p.m., inshallah, I've got a few things to type before then. For now, I will see you guys soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa